Hello everyone, welcome back to the basement for this part 3 of my turning an Amstrad CPC 6128 into a VIC-20 which is nothing more than me having bought cheaply enough an Amstrad 6128 doing it up, seeing it's working and trying to sell it on to be able to afford a Commodore VIC-20 so what we did in part 1 and 2 was we cleaned the keyboard and we cleaned the motherboard and the whole system down and put it all back together and just made sure it was kind of powering on at least so what we're going to do today is I'm going to test the memory, I'm going to test the ROMs, and I'm going to test all of the I.O. ports or the input-output ports. So the likes of the cassette port, the port for a second external floppy disk drive, also the expansion port. Um, unfortunately, I can't test the printer port because I don't have a printer or any way of connecting it to a PC to test for uh, RS-232 uh, compatibility or communications so we're just kind of going to have to assume that that's working so without any ado whatsoever without any more hanging around or waiting let's get right to it and test if this little guy is working okay so we're ready for our tests i'm after turning on the system and it seems to be working away at least as much as it did before the keyboard is still working it's still beeping and the volume control knob is still working as well so the very first test that i want to do on this is the joystick port because it's the easiest one to test and all you actually need to test it is a joystick so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to plug the joystick into the joystick port and you'll see the amstrad is is great for this type of a test at least because when we push up down left and right we get an up, down, left and right arrow. So we know that those directions at least are working. And when I press the button, I get a little X on screen. So we know our joystick port is working that far along at least. So that's very, very good. That's our joystick tested. Okay, so we're after testing our joystick. The next thing I'd like to test on this system is the expansion port. So that's one of the ports here around the back of the system. Now the way I'm going to test that is I'm going to use this little ROM board that I built there about a year or so ago. And if it interests you in any way, I'll put a link to it. The video I made on it just up in the corner there. But this guy contains a number of ROMs. And when I plug it into the expansion port on the back of the CPC and power on, you'll see that the screen we're presented with is a little bit different. So I'll just power on here now. And here we go. So normally what we'd have is our Amstrad 128K microcomputer and the copyright 1985 and then our ready prompt. But here we're also presented with a couple of the ROMs that are available on the ROM board I just put in. So we have like some Multimark. Toolkit, Parados, and Amstrad Diagnostics. So that shows at least that there is communication on the expansion port. So that's a very, very good sign. Now, um, one of the things I'm going to do to test this a little more thoroughly is we've got our Amstrad Diagnostics version 1.2 here. And this is a program that was written quite recently by Noel from Noel's Retro Lab. And it's a program that was missing for a long time for the Amstrad CPC. Uh, there was no real way or there was no real set of programs that we could run to test all the functionality of a CPC until you wrote this. So it's a fantastic little program. Um, in order to run it, all I have to do is type diag like that and hit enter. And the first thing it does is it tests the lower 64K of memory. And it comes back telling me that the lower RAM has passed. Now we can see straight away some of the system info to see if we've got a problem with the system or not. So we've got the model is a CPC 6128 which is perfect that's exactly what it is. The vendor is Amstrad so it's set as an Amstrad when we power it on it's not set as a Snyder or anything like that so that is also correct. The refresh rate is 50 Hertz it's a PAL 50 Hertz system so bang on and it says that there's 128 kilobytes of RAM available to us. So that's a very good sign too. It's seen all the RAM in the system. Now, whether the RAM is good or not, that's, that's a different story. But we know that it sees the full 128 kilobytes. Uh, also, it says CRTC is 01. I don't know what that means, but that's what it's telling us. And the floppy disk controller here is detected. So that's excellent. It means that, well, 
to some level at least the floppy disk controller chip inside in the system is functioning. Now the other tests that we can run here is the upper RAM test. So we know that we have 128 kilobytes of RAM and according to this the lower 64 kilobytes are good. So we want to check and see that the upper 64 kilobytes are good. So we'll press U and it runs through a little RAM test here to check the upper 64 kilobytes. Now if I had the full four megabytes that you can install on one of these boards installed, this program is capable of testing all four megabytes of RAM, although it would take an awful long time to do it. But um, it's after coming back that the upper RAM tests have passed, so our memory should be perfectly good in this system. And it says that the C3 config is supported. Again, I don't know what that's about. Um, so I can press any key to enter out of that or to exit out. Uh, so now we have lower ROM and upper ROM tests. So we can run those, so I'll tap R. Now what it's doing here is it's checking our lower ROM. So this is the operating system for the 6128. And it says it's the French version and this is some kind of checksum or something, it's 8051. What it's doing here is detecting upper ROM. So it's detecting any of the ROMs that are in the system, the two ROM chips that I showed earlier on the board, there's the 6128 basic, and it detects it as being French with this little checksum here. Amstrad Diagnostics is this ROM here, the one that, that's right here that contains the, um, the program that we're running here. Then here in ROM 7, it sees the AMS DOS ROM, which is the second ROM chip inside in this board. So um, an awful lot of these are seen as unknown because the, the diagnostics program here doesn't actually know what they are, some of the programs that I have programmed on this board here. So that's why we, we have a lot of red for any that aren't known and also for, for any that actually um, have, a, have an empty slot. So there we go, we press any key, we return to the main menu. So this upper ROM test is seen as failed. However, I do know that this ROM board is working correctly and it seems to me that the expansion port is working correctly as well. So I'd say it's probably a false negative is what we're getting on that. Uh, I can run keyboard tests by pressing K. And here I can go through all the keys and see that um, see that all of them are working without uh, without any errors or whatever. And uh, yeah, there we go. That tests all those. And equally, I can also test my joystick as well from here. And to exit out of that, I can either hold fire down for a while or I can hold exit down for a little while and it'll take us out. And finally, what we have are soap tests here that we can run. So uh, what it'll do is it'll go through the lower and upper ROM tests and also the RAM tests in order just to, to test the system thoroughly over and over again until you stop it. So that's what I'll probably do at the end of all this is I'll leave that run for a couple of hours to be sure that it's working properly. So I'm happy enough that my little RAM board here is, or my little RAM board is working, that the extension port is working properly. So the next thing we'll move on to is the second floppy disk port. Okay, so we're making our way through these tests here and things seem to be going quite well so far. Uh, what I'd like to test now is the second disk port or the external drive port on the Amstrad CPC. And in order to do that, I'm going to be using this three and a half inch IBM compatible disk drive. Now, I made up a cable for it a little while ago uh, to connect it to the CPC. And also I'm going to need to use it in conjunction with my ROM board here because in order to access these disks, we need a different version of DOS than the Amstrad comes with. And I've got Paradox installed here on my little ROM board. So that's the reason I need to have that plugged in. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about connecting one of these drives and accessing the full capacity and all the rest, I made a video on it not too long ago, and I'll put a link to it just up in the corner there. But for the moment, what we're going to do is I'm going to power on the Amstrad here. It should power on in the same way as we saw before with all of these ROMs available to us. And we've got the little activity light lit up on our drive here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this drive with this little symbol and B. I'll put in a disk first and I'll hit enter. So the reason I need to do that is 
Generally speaking, the internal drive on a CPC is seen as drive A and it's selected by default. So we need to tell it we want to use drive B. Now, when I type cat, it'll give me a list or a catalog of the contents on disk. So I already have a program called basement.bass on that disk there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a really quick hello world program here now that we'll try and save onto disk and see if it works or not. So I will type just quick hello like that, 20 go to 10. So when I run that, that should give us hello right down the screen. So that's fine. Now what we'll do is we'll save it to disk. So I type save and we'll call it a uh, test prog. There we go. And I hit return. So that should hopefully save that to disk. Now when I type cat, we should have two files. We have basement.bass and we have testprog.bass. So I will list. There's the program that I created. We'll type new to clear the memory. There we go. So there's nothing in memory. If I run, nothing happens. We'll clear the screen. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to run test prog. So that should load the program we, we created and saved onto disk and run it. So there we go. There we go. So it is saved into disk to some to some level at least. And also it's written back from disk. So that's that's very good. That port seems to be working well. But what we'll do is, seeing as I've got a game or two here on disk, we will uh, we'll see if it can run any of these. There we go. So I've got this uh, space game from before. If I type run space, we'll see if it can load that from disk. There we go. That's loading up. So I would say that that disk port, for me at least, seems to be working A-OK. -okay. I'd be happy enough with that. And um, we'll see, do we have music on this? There we go. And actually, as we have this running, as we have this running, now is a prime time to connect these big speakers I have here into the side port. But what we'll do is we'll power them up first with this little external battery thingy. There we go. So we should get the sound of the CPC through these speakers when I connect in here. And then at least we'll know that the external sound port is working. Need I see more? <laughs> that appears to be working right. Now the volume control, of course, doesn't uh, control this. The volume control is only for the internal speaker, not for these ones here. So, um, there we go, that's that much working, as good as we can hope for it to work. So all that's left to test really is the cassette port. And we will set that up and we'll see what it does. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the tests here. Uh, the only port that's left really to be tested on it is the cassette interface to see that we can save to cassette and also read from cassette. So what we're going to do first is reading from cassette. So I'm going to use my uh, TZX Duino here, which is a little Ard Arduino based uh, tape emulator, which I made up a couple of years back. And um, I've connected it into the tape port on the CPC. So everything else is connected up as it was. I didn't take any of it out, the ROM board, the the secondary floppy drive and all the rest. Shouldn't matter that it's there. So I just power on. And now what I want to do is I want to tell it to use the tape port. So I tap in this little symbol here and tape. And I hit enter and now it's ready to read from tape anything that I wish to load. So I'll press control and enter and ask me to press play and then any key. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press any key and then I'll press play. So this now is sending cauldron the game into the CPC. So what we should see after a couple of moments is that it's found block one and it'll carry on loading. And this is going to take every bit as long as a regular tape would take 
to load. So what I'll do is I'll fast forward this sequence. I'll come back to you when it's loaded up. Okay, so we're back. Five minutes and five seconds it took for that game to load up. So um, that port appears to be working properly. Uh, we'll see, yeah, the game appears to be working right. And yeah, I'm satisfied enough with that. This system appears to be working quite well. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the tests here. Everything that we've thrown at it so far is after passing with flying colors more or less. So uh, the very last thing I want to check is that this Amstrad here is capable of saving a program I've written onto cassette. So I was originally going to use my PC to do this, but I decided for authenticity's sake, I'd use this old um, 1980s cassette recorder. So as I didn't have a cable for it, I had to jimmy rig a type of thing. So, uh, so we'll see if that works as well. But anyway, I'm after writing this little program that should print on the screen, tape saving works, if it works. So what I want to do is I want to select tape as the, uh, the method of loading and saving data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type save and we'll call it tape test. There we go, tape test. So it asks me to press record and play and then any key. So that's what I'll do. My tape counter is at zero, record and play, and any key. So hopefully this should save tape test block one. There we go. And it shouldn't take too long because it's, it's a short little program. So we can hear the data being recorded onto the tape recorder over there. There we go, ready. So I can stop the tape here and rewind it. And now because I jimmy rigged this little cable myself, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to plug it from the microphone into the headphones and around this side I'm going to have to change the pin from audio out to audio in. There we go. Okay, I'll power down the system so that the memory is completely empty and to test that this worked I select tape, control and enter so I'll press any key and press play. It should find tape test. There we go, loading tape test block one. So this is good. There we go, tape saving works. So the system has passed its tape tests as far as I'm concerned. So there we go, I could not be happier. Every test that I've thrown at this system has passed and pretty much with flying colors. Um, we know the memory is good, we know the ROMs are good. Any of the IO ports I've tested have tested perfectly. Any games I've tried to load on the system, be it from cassette or from the external floppy disk drive, have loaded up no problem, I've had no crashes whatsoever. And on top of that, I'm after running the Amstrad Diagnostic Soap Test a number of times for about two hours each time and I have had no problems whatsoever with that. There was one little test however that I forgot to run. You may remember that I mentioned before and um, we can test our memory and all the rest and everything come back fine but the only way to know for sure that we have 128k of functioning RAM is to load up a game that needs that 128k of RAM to work. So what I've done is I've loaded up the Adams Family which is one of those very games. And it seems to be functioning away absolutely fine. There's no trouble at all. It's playing away. It's working great. So the system this far seems to be absolutely perfect. Now, in the next episode, because we're not quite finished yet, what I'm going to be doing is looking at the three inch disk drive that came with this system. And that three inch disk drive is in exactly the same state as the rest of the system was, which means it's full of dust and it's a bit dirty. So what we need to do is we need to clean all that up. We need to oil it, we need to grease it and uh, see if we can get it working and see if there's any adjustments or anything that need to be made if we can get it to that stage. So guys, listen, thank you very, very much for sticking with me up until this point. If you haven't done so already, think of hitting that subscribe button down the bottom. Give us an old thumbs up and leave a comment if you would. I would be delighted for any comments or any advice or anything you have to say. So um, until the next episode, I'll be waiting for you down here in the basement. So we'll talk to you then. Bye bye.